We are now going to wrap things up with our money line underdog parlay. Last week we very close to it. You know, Troy, SMU, both in it in the, in the closing seconds in you know different varieties. We were trying to serve up a, a ten to one parlay there. We're going to go back to our bag of tricks and see if we can find something really lucrative to try to turn around your entire September. Because honestly, going through the entire slate, I don't know how you felt. There just weren't a lot of single digit underdogs on the table that seemed viable. So when you hear mine, I I really have to think outside the box, but I'm going to go ahead and and hope that you can receive me with open arms, possibly, you know, showing some love. I'll I'll tip my hand in in regards to my pick there, but let's start with your addition for our G5 Moneyline underdog parlay. Yeah, I'll be honest, I feel a lot better about mine after listening to uh, the new BCS yesterday, because I know Stucky likes this too. I'm going with Georgia State against Coastal. You know, Georgia State's 0-3, but when you look at it closely, they outgained South Carolina week one. I'm not saying they should have won that game, but they were right in the mix. They outgained Charlotte by over 100 yards last week. Darren Granger really struggled passing in the opener, but he tossed three touchdowns against UNC. He had four against Charlotte. He's finally playing better. They still have those two stud running backs, Greg and Williams, who I I love both of them. And Coastal Carolina is 97th at uh, defensive explosiveness. They're 98th in offensive explosiveness. I know it's not the bread and butter. They're, they're kind of just a slow, methodical team. But the Georgia State defense has been really good against the run. And while they have issues against the pass, Coastal's just 103rd in pass play success rate this season. We love Grayson McCall. He's terrific. He's wicked efficient. He just he does what he needs to do. But they have no weapons. They don't have anyone who could pick up a big play and take advantage of a blown coverage through three games. They have just one receiver with double digit catches. They're a, <coughs> excuse me. They're 109th in pass play explosiveness. So they can't attack Georgia state's biggest weakness, which is getting beat deep through the air. That's not coastal's game. And this Georgia state deep, uh, team has gotten better and better each week, especially on offense. They've lost three tough games, but they had a chance to win all of them. I think Sean Elliott gets his boys fired up. I think they come out with their hair on fire. I think they play desperate. I think they know they've left three games on the table. And I think they come out here and beat Coastal Carolina at home. I think it's a good play because honestly, last year, Georgia State was a strong running game paired with a solid defense. This year, their defense is a mess but they've now paired explosive plays through the air with that rushing attack. That's still dynamic. I think this is going to be a high scoring game and you might as well, you know, take a team in a shootout that clearly has proven, you know, they can play above their level playing North Carolina within a touchdown, I think speaks to their overall quality. And honestly, I think it really, the game within the game just comes down to Georgia state being able to protect Granger because coastal Carolina having to replace so many starters in overall production from last year's defense. The one thing that's carried over, is their their havoc and their sack rate so if he's able to play a clean game you know two three sacks max i think they're going to be able to move the football and this is going to certainly be a game in the fourth quarter interestingly i think the only fly in the ointment is can coastal slow things down and play a little bit of keep away i know they're banged up in their running back room but that's kind of the the beauty of their offense being so multifaceted that when they want to go to more of a spread triple option, they can do it, kind of eat up the clock. Is that a way for them to protect their defense against the Georgia State team that's coming in red hot offensively? I don't know. I, I think overall this is a solid play. If you told me three weeks ago this was a play and it was essentially a pick em, I think I'd be on Georgia State as well. So I, I, I like that. I'm going to go ahead and swing for the fences here. As I mentioned, not a whole lot that was compelling on the menu, but I'm going to go with Indiana plus 550 against Cincinnati. And you can look at Indiana two different ways. They're three and oh, and Bill Conley from ESPN and his SP plus projections of the 32 teams that are still undefeated. He ranks them 31st, essentially saying that they've just been absolutely lucky to get by a Western Kentucky team and Illinois team. To me, those are two bowl teams. I think Western Kentucky is going bowling. I think Illinois is going to get to that six win threshold. So realistically, I think those are pretty decent wins. And Connor Bazelak has surprised me in terms of, you know, being able to protect the football. I know he hasn't been overly efficient in terms of his completion percentage, but he has two tremendous weapons on the perimeter. Cam Camper has 292 receiving yards leading the team this season. And then DJ Matthews, transfer 201 yards per season or per uh, per game already at this rate 
I think they're going to be able to attack the lone weakness in the Cincinnati defense. I know when you look at their overall metrics, they look phenomenal defensively. They played Kennesaw State, no disrespect to the Owls, and they played Miami of Ohio without Brett Gabbert. So I'm just looking at the opener against Arkansas, and that was an Arkansas team that was run first, run second, run third, and then peppering in a little bit of DJ or KJ Jefferson from 2021. He was throwing all over them. And I think the comparison between the, the two passing attacks, I think Indiana is going to be able to move the ball. I'll take a team that can hurt you through the air in an upset spot. And honestly, I think from a motivational standpoint, I, I teased it up with a love, love each other. The Leo tagline for Tom Allen. This is a guy who has believers in his locker room. The fact that they're three and zero, I'm going to look at that as a positive where some people are saying they're a paper tiger. I think they're going to give Cincinnati a game and hopefully the passing game can, you know, strike gold again and sneak out another close win. 